Flat Earth Clues Part 6 Depth Perception This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the Flat Earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. This clue looks into the inevitable design question below the surface, or more specifically, how thick the Flat Earth design would need to be. To start, let's quickly recap the design features so far. A basic dome structure made up of advanced high-density material thousands of miles wide and at least a hundred miles in height. The ceiling of said structure being projected upon by an ultra-high definition system using super LED technology and a combination of 2D and 3D imaging to simulate all celestial bodies including sun, moon, stars, and so on. This ceiling is then protected by a scaling decrease in temperature and oxygen levels to the point where human life isn't naturally sustainable above four miles. The lower surface of the dome structure consists of an organic layout of continents grouped at the center, ensuring that no land bridge exists to the outer ring. This is then surrounded by hundreds of miles of salt water in order to limit sea travel. The salt oceans are then adjusted with a scaling decrease in temperature as the outer area is approached to the point where salt water freezes, forming icebergs, further reducing sea travel. The outer ring is then elevated to a height of 10,000 feet, reducing oxygen levels, and a buffer zone of 300 miles is created. This zone is devoid of all life forms that could be used as food, further discouraging land travel. That all sounds pretty good. But we left out one thing, depth. Keeping human beings away from the ceiling is easy, because it requires higher technology. Protecting the outer ring is a little more difficult, but can be accomplished with layers of negative reinforcement. Protecting the actual common ground is a different challenge, because digging is basic. Everyone knows how to use a shovel, and most construction requires a generous amount of digging. In addition, Natural resources such as coal, oil, minerals, are harvested through large-scale digging operations. So it's safe to say that any human population is going to be digging a lot of holes, because it's easy and it's necessary to continue their way of life. That being said, how thick would you need to make the Flat Earth model so that people didn't accidentally dig their way through? You could use the same method as the outside barrier and create a series of undesirable layers ending in a solid barrier, but the ever-expanding increases in general population would create an unnecessary risk. If the bottom of the flat earth was composed of, say, an unbreakable material, this would pique the digger's curiosity, and if repeated all over the world, would raise suspicions of design. While a solid barrier works at the end of a frozen wasteland where no one is venturing, or allowed, it doesn't do much if it's found in a mining quarry, or someone's backyard. For that, you need something that hasn't been used up to this point. A scaling increase in temperature, all the way to an ignition flashpoint, and then beyond. Now you will jump in and say, well of course, we all know that there is molten rock below the surface, we see it in volcanoes and, well, volcanoes. Yes, yes you do. And we've all seen the cross-section diagram of the globe Earth, which shows ever brighter bands of molten structure and so on, which is why I included the wiki link in the description that covers the official view of the Earth structure. And I quote, Scientific understanding of the internal structure of the Earth is based on observations of rock in outcrop, samples brought to the surface from greater depths by volcanoes, analysis of seismic waves, measurements of gravitational and magnetic fields, and experiments with crystals at pressure and temperatures characteristic of the Earth's deep interior. In short, they have no clue on what's below them. None. In fact, the deepest holes ever drilled which I've also linked in the description, only go down 8 miles. To repeat, no one has gone below 8 miles anywhere. And every drilling survey is the same, a scaling increase in temperature to the point where drill bits stop working. And you come back and say, but volcanoes! Yes, there are volcanoes, holes in the earth where molten rock is produced, under pressure, I might add. 
Certainly that can't be artificially created. No? We can melt rock right now. It's called a smelting plant. What do you think your car is made out of? Melted, reformed, and polished rock. We have the technology to do this. It all comes down to scale. Create a large set of furnaces at, say, 50 miles below the surface that can melt and pump molten rock. And you say, what would the furnaces be made out of? Oh, I don't know. How about the same dome material that can withstand nuclear weapons? So you take the molten rock, locate a few random access points on the surface, and the rest comes naturally. Volcanoes also reinforce the Earth structure model that the molten rock goes all the way to the core, which then in turn reinforces the globe model, and then we're back to where we are now. A smoldering globe flying through space at high speeds that from a design standpoint makes no sense. So how thick would the flat earth model floor need to be? Oh, for common use, say less than 100 miles, similar to the ceiling in scale. Large heat generators placed in a pattern, a thin layer of molten rock 10 to 20 miles down, which is really just a geologic pipe system to help with the generation of terrain. And there you have it, an efficient way of discouraging all those digging humans from reaching too far, combining a physical barrier with a mental one. Eight miles down and you're going to tell me what the entire core looks like? Give me a break. So do some of your own research and ask questions. Please feel free to email me at msargent23 at comcast.net or 303-494-6631. Flat Earth Clues, Part 10, Hiding God. This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat Earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. As you can tell from the title, I'm taking a different approach. Eventually, I was going to have to address the question of what happens next or what we do now with the information at hand. If you've made it through the guide and the first nine clues, then at this point you're either buying into the flat model or on the fence. If this is the first one you went to because of the title, I recommend you go back, because we're not going to do much in the way of reviewing. But if you're still with me, 
then you would agree that, one, the world you've been taught has been kept from you, and two, one way or another, you would like to prove this out. So how is this possible? The authority in question who created what you call the globe is guarding all the gates. They protect the sky, the outer edge, and most importantly, the education system that shows us at an early age what they want us to see. Nobody listening to this has their own spaceship or advanced rocket program. Nobody actually owns a long-distance icebreaker. And while some of you may have a private plane, I wouldn't recommend testing a military barrier that technically doesn't exist. But then again, you have to remember that this is not the story of David and Goliath. The hidden world was never going to be sustainable forever. As a civilization evolves, the tools the authority uses as a method of control become more vulnerable. I've learned many things about systems over the years, and one thing that I find most interesting is as layers of strength increase, the higher the chance that they can be used to your advantage. But maybe I'm talking in riddles. I should be boiling it down to what can be done by showing you what's being hidden, what's important, and how it can be spread to others without looking like a crazy person. To be clear, and I can't stress this enough, do not start conversations with the word flat earth. Think of it like fight club. The first rule of flat club is that you do not talk about flat club. Before you started waking up and watching all these things, you were like me. You laughed and mocked everything that was flat earth. You may have learned faster than others, but the knee-jerk reaction by 99% of the people was created the day they sat down in a classroom and stared at the globe. Look at the videos, not just mine, but others who are putting forward some great arguments, and ask the questions that people can relate to. I'm going to introduce three very important questions that you can use, each with a statement that precedes it, and each statement is a motivation for a different group of people. If you don't fall into one of these three groups, then I guarantee you know people that do. The first statement is this, you are being hidden. What do I mean by that? Well, this goes back to Clue 7 and Clue 9, which talk about the flights in the Southern Hemisphere. If you are flying a plane over the Southern Hemisphere, your flight is not being tracked. How can this be used to find out the truth? It's simple, it's quick, and it costs no money. No matter what country you live in, send a quick note to your local, state, or federal representative and ask them this question. Why are citizens of our country flying over oceans without the safety net of the GPS system? And remind them that GPS stands for global, not partial. Without GPS, Anything could happen to your plane, and no one knows where you are. And while you're at it, remind them that the GPS system was built by the United States Department of Defense, who never does anything small. The system that is in effect now has what appears to be huge, deliberate gaps in the Southern Hemisphere only. Do not mention Flat Earth. Just voice your concern about the safety of you, your loved ones, and your fellow citizens. Will they get back to you? Possibly. Will they give you a satisfactory answer? Not a chance. Because they will only have what the military gives them. What this will do, however, is create a unique buzz in certain circles that may prove to be useful later. The more politicians or high-ranking officials you contact, the greater the noise. The motivation here, as you can tell, is general public concern. The second statement is this. Wealth is being hidden. What do I mean by that? Goes back to Clue 2 and every other mention regarding Antarctica. In 1954, it was announced on national television that the continent was just millions of miles of rich energy resources. 
and by 1959 it was sealed off like Area 51. How can this be used to find out the truth? By contacting anyone you know in either the petroleum, natural gas, or mineral industry. This means ExxonMobil, British Petroleum, Royal Dutch Shell, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, BHP Billiton, Rio Tinto, Glencore, Anglo-American, and there are many others. Find anyone in these companies and make inquiries about their prospects in Antarctica. Send them the link to the Admiral Byrd interview and ask them why, if there are no environmental conflicts regarding oil, gas, or mining, why aren't they allowed to even petition the idea, even when the world's energy resources are dwindling more every day? Put the sound of money in their ear. They may not be able to break through the decades of red tape laid out in front of them, but it will create a buzz from a different side, the motivation of greed, and of pristine resources just begging to be harvested. And finally, to preface the third statement, I need to thank all the people who have sent me stacks and stacks of biblical scripture, asking me to stop dancing around the title of the flat model and call the structure what it really is. And you know, they have a point. I have put myself at a distance because I want to reach people who are outside of religious faith and even outside of general conspiracies. But for all those spiritual groups who have contacted me, I can now, however, say with conviction that this third statement is this. They are hiding God. Despite what labels I put on the flat model structure, the oldest names are from the oldest texts, one of those being called the firmament. If the firmament was indeed discovered in 1956 and it was deliberately hidden, then the ruling authority not only hid the structure, but evidence of the builders, and by builders I mean creators, and by that I mean what people define as God. Hiding God could be considered one of the worst ideas of all time, and if you are a person of great or small faith, you have a vested interest in any evidence that would solidify and vindicate your years of dedicated service. If a structure was found that had, for all intents and purposes, the handprint of God on it, then the ruling authority has no right to keep it from you. There are billions of people on this world who have personally dealt with the concept of God and would like to know for sure if these beliefs are well placed. Or, in short, you want to know the meaning of life. It's out there. And it's been hidden from you. Your motivation is clear. Go to your church leaders, your congregation, and tell them science probably found evidence of God in 1956 and decided to keep it a secret. If you know people of religious power, send this up the ladder. Get the word out and see what comes back. Between these three statements and questions, people will talk to people who will talk with others and eventually reach someone who knows. This isn't a grassroot or groundswell movement that takes a long time, because the system that has been used to mold and control you these past years has been based on speed, and by that I mean real time. All it takes is a single video, a memorandum, one whistleblower, one key person, and everything changes, not in months or weeks or days, but hours. And in those hours, everything changes because of the speed. People all over the world wake up and look at the sky with new eyes, and things start to get better. One person, that's all it takes. One person to come forward and share what has been hidden for so long. Maybe someone who is tired of all the games. Maybe someone who has gone year after year burdened by such a heavy secret. Maybe you, who are listening right now, who is looking for a reason to come forward. 
this is it. And if you don't want to walk into the light and be the hero, I understand. But if you can't, for whatever reason, then be anonymous, share the message, and help us make this world better, because it can be better. For everyone else, give this person an opening. Give them the opportunity and give them the support they need to help reclaim what's left of our civilization because we need it now more than ever. I will keep spreading the word for as long as I can in hopes that everyone that hears it starts seeing things with new eyes. And I encourage each of you to do the same. And maybe one day we will learn to treat others better than we treat ourselves.